Hi everybody, hope you're all having a great day. Yesterday I was out uh, out and about and I saw this quick scene, we can see a painting of it here. I was driving, I didn't have time to, well I did have time to pull up but I didn't, I just sort of thought that would make a cool painting. Uh, this was early in the morning, I went out uh, the rest of the day, I was moving furniture and stuff because as you know I've been moving in with Special K so I was sort of bringing a lot of my stuff over and then when I sat down in the evening I thought I'm going to try and capture uh, the essence of that scene I saw from memory. So um, it was a quick painting, it didn't take me very long so unusually I'm going to talk you through this one in real time. So. Let's crack on. So this is painted on my iPad Pro and I didn't, usually I, I get a roller and, and crash loads of color on, but because this one was um, a painting that I've done from memory, I decided that before I could get the um start adding color i needed to get the image onto the paper onto the canvas i wanted to make sure that oh that is so annoying how many times do you uh, tap the screen with two fingers to undo your last move and it rotates the canvas in art rage on the ipad <sighs> really does frustrate me Anyway, uh, back to the, the painting. Yeah, I wanted to get this um, image on the canvas as quick as I could because uh, it was sort of a fleeting view that I had of this scene. Probably took, you know, it's just a couple of seconds to sort of capture everything that was in there. And I remember being, first of all, the thing that, that uh, grabbed my attention was the bales of A on the left-hand side. Now, in the UK... We don't have A stacks anymore. The the kind of got these machines, I guess, that uh, collects the A into these great cylinder things, and then they stack the cylinders into these huge mounds. So that's my interpretation of the cylinders at the the top left. And then next to that, there was this little farm. Well, it wasn't a, a little farm building. It was quite a big sort of uh, farm looked like almost like an industrial barn it was you know quite huge really and then at the side of that there was uh, all these trees so as regards the um rules of third i've kind of put the bales of a vertically on the rules of third but on, on the horizontal plane i pushed them up even higher because i wanted to uh, make this a dramatic painting so i've sort of not put them exactly on that rule of third I've pushed them right up and the other thing is uh, this painting isn't about the sky it was about the field well the bales of A and the field in that leads you up to the bales of A in front because when I was on the road the road was a lot lower than the uh, field and the bales of A so I was sort of looking up at it and and that also uh, captured my attention because it drew my eye into the scene with the with this um uh with the, with the field so i really wanted to make sure that i um got this field in that was really important and the fact that it was plowed so i've started to add some color i've got the sky in uh, very rough and then i put in a light green in that distant field and some of the blue from the sky i've put in at the middle ground uh, distance just to um, reflect the light if you like of the sky into the ground and help tie the foreground into the middle ground and the sky uh, the sun is coming from the left hand side but um, behind the bales of a but from the left so the cyl cylinder parts of the bales of a are in bright sunlight but the um, sides of the bales of A aren't. So therefore, the trees, they're in shade. The uh, side of the barn is going to be in shade. But the front of the barn will be highlighted. And we can have some light reflected onto the uh, very light material that was on the roof. Just to add a, a bit of impact, really. Um, so 
so just going in sketching the barn from memory i couldn't remember what was dividing that distant field to the foreground field i know there was something there i got a feeling it might have been a line of trees but i didn't want to put trees in there i want because i didn't want anything uh, obstructing the bells of a so i put in a little fence and a, a tiny bit of dry stone wall at the left side of it and then i start concentrating on this um foreground and as i said earlier this painting is in real time so this is how fast i usually paint and i'm selecting the colors off the color wheel cracking them on i don't i'm not sure i don't think i used i might have used the thick paint a tiny bit uh on the cylinders but not much uh, maybe on the the mounds uh, uh, or the ploughed field a bit later on, but most of the work was definitely done with just the flat square brush um, with, you know, n no sort of texture to it at all. And basically what I'm doing, I'm working from the top, working down and adding colour and gradually making it a little bit darker in the foreground because I want the foreground to be a lot darker than the middle ground and that will draw your eye into it and add a sense of perspective because we need some aerial perspective going off here as well as um, linear perspective so the aerial perspective I'm really talking about sort of dark to light colors and thick lines to lighter lines thick lines in the foreground and they get thinner as you progress towards the distance and I'm just having fun with colour really. I'm sort of picking colours off the colour wheel and um, cracking them on there and sort of trying to pick complementary colours to one another. And just um, putting in squiggles. And at this point, I wasn't really thinking about the light too much. I was just sort of getting in these lines and I wanted a sort of a the point to the right hand side the lines sort of point directly at the barn but on the left hand side of the painting they curve more and that adds a, a bit of a, a dramatic effect to it and it also adds to the um, perspective of the painting as well so I'm sort of concentrating on that rather than where the lights come in and just getting some color on there but i do a little bit later on you'll see i'll, I'll start thinking about the fact that the light is from the left hand side so these furrows in the field are going to be lighter on the left and darker on the right but at this point i'm just sort of playing with color and um working within the parameters of our rage for the ipad where you can't have a brush bigger than 100% because I would have liked uh, to have uh, used a, a bigger brush on this one but I didn't want to set up my PC going to the studio I was just sort of sat in the lounge uh, sketching away having I had a, two really busy days one day I was helping my daughter move house and her, her boyfriend they've just bought a place uh, so they've had a lot of my furniture uh, because I moved in with Special K. So uh, I helped them move that across and then they helped me move uh, a couple of settees or, or seats, chairs uh, in Special K's house. Boy, they, they were so heavy. And, and then the day I painted this, it was really emotional because I was sort of watching my house being dismantled and all the furniture go and it's where I've sort of um you know I've sort of lived not on my own because my daughters live with me for a great chunk of the time but pretty much independently for the last 18 years so uh that that was a, a bit of a wrench to sort of dismantle all that and so I was really really tired uh, when I did this but I was still excited about doing it because I've got this memory and uh, I wanted to get it before it faded and uh, was sort of gone forever because I haven't got the best memory in the world. I do kind of forget stuff pretty quick, which my daughters take advantage of because they'll say to me, uh, you remember you said you was going to um, help me do this or, you know, 
so, so, whatever, help me do this, babysit or something. I'll say, no, I don't remember saying that. They, no, you did, Dad, you did. And, and I'm going, I, I can't remember if I did or not. So uh, I, I swear to God, they um, use that as to their advantage. So there's no edits in this. This is real-time painting, no cuts. Or it's just the full thing as it happened. So now I'm thinking, okay, I've kind of got this perspective in. Let's look at the um, bales of A, these circular bales of A. And I do go in with a thick gloss. You can see I've picked that there. Oh, it's nice watching this in real time because I can actually see uh, what I've done and uh, be accurate at telling you information instead of sort of sometimes I might just guess it a bit. Not always 100% um, accurate. Most of the times I am though. So anyway, just sort of get these circles in. I thought it might be nice to just use that colour on the front of the barn as well. I got it in my head that this barn's sort of a, a metal framed type structure. It's not a traditional wooden building at all. And these sides of the uh, bales of A, they're gonna be much darker than that. They, they, um, I don't know why I didn't go straight in darker because I got it in my head that there was it was a lot of the painting was about the light as as well because uh, the way the light was hitting the ploughed field and uh, it was bouncing off this um, a stack or these cylinder bells of a so I can't believe I I didn't make that darker here I create a new layer. And I changed the blend mode to multiply. I got it in me and I was going to start putting shadows in and things. But to be honest, um, I quickly decided that that wasn't the approach I needed for this painting. And I don't do too much work on this blending mode. I go back to the normal square brush. If I'm working on a, a blending mode or a layer where I've changed the blending mode to say multiply. I always use a flat brush. I don't want the texture um, showing up in that layer because um, if it's a blend mode and I'm putting, a, I'm really putting a wash on, just a thin layer of paint that where the uh, underlying colours would glow through. So if that was the case, you're not going to get brush strokes in it. So I don't want to see brush strokes in that multiply layer. So I always choose uh, just a regular flat brush for that. So I'm using that blend mode now to add the this dark um, shadow side to these bales of A. And that is pretty much all I do. I mean, I did a little bit of the tree in the side of the barn with it, but um, it's just these bells of a where i'm sort of putting the shadow in and we have got dark shadows because the light was really bright so everything was sort of overexposed if you like on the way it was being caught by light and then really dark in the shadows probably would have been a photographer's nightmare i guess because they like sort of uh much more softer light than the harsh light of this but i was liking it for the there you can see now I've got these bales of A and they're beginning to look a little bit like bales of A. But I'm going to have to say I need to um, just frame them with a um, a few trees. And that's like this counter change. You're putting light against dark. So uh, by putting these dark trees against that light of the uh, bales of A, it really makes them stand out a little bit more and I'm going to flick a few uh, tree trunks in that as well and to be honest I think those trees were actually there they were in the scene um, there I double tap the screen again oh my god uh, and 
so frustrating wanting to undo and it doesn't happen so what am i doing now uh it looks like i'm on the normal square brush but i'm going back to this thick gloss brush and i'm guessing um although the keyboard came up there i didn't change anything that was a mistake and what i do i like to do a lot on the ipad if you look i by uh, tapping on the um tool at the bottom left it closes all of the toolbars down and it means you can't select them by accident so i like to do that a lot just sort of adding a bit of uh, an highlight to the top of the trees which i'll then sort of drag the color down that looks a bit thick that one and uh, just to make a few tree trunks pretty abstract nothing you know i'm not worried about detail this is all from memory uh this i think this is probably the first painting i've ever done on youtube uh from memory usually you know i'm working from a uh, photograph and somebody did ask me would i do something from memory or made up i think they said can you make something up well this is i guess as close as i'm going to get to making something up perhaps um i used to do this a lot when i was uh before i got into digital painting and i was working mostly in watercolor well uh nothing else just uh solely in watercolors i would paint 80 percent maybe more of, of the paintings that I did were from memory, from scenes, uh, or I'd make a very quick pencil sketch. I never worked from photographs ever. I would take, I would work from sketches that I'd done or from memory. And it's only really since I did the, start doing the digital that I've ever worked from photographs. Uh, I think that maybe a stem from the fact that I started doing uh, portraits, the, channel when i first started it was there was a few landscapes but i did a lot more portraits then i don't do so many now and i think i used the photos because uh, it's a lot easier for the portrait work and then i started using them for um everything and i think it was because i, th I think it was nice for people to see what i was um working from you know rather than sort of imagination but i did like doing this and i might i may do uh a lot more instead just one more a lot more because uh it was really good fun and it it came together so quick because that is another thing you know if you're doing something from memory if you're going out and you see you see something before you start painting you've got a solid image in your head in your mind of what you want to achieve whereas if you're working from a photo you might not have that you'll be thinking i can put that there move that around a bit and um shuffle that maybe change the color scheme but when you're working from memory you've got everything's already there you can see what you want to achieve before you even start so anyway, I've got, this looks a bit radical where I've sort of put in these um, dark lines. And the idea is that the light is uh, coming from the left and throwing the right hand side of these, uh, this plowed field into shadow. And I so just, just sort of making random shapes where I think the light might catch it. And I'll probably add some light colors into that as well. But I'm I'm gonna go across the whole of the uh, painting, and it gets again. It adds some. Um, I think it adds some perspective, aerial perspective, where we've got this dark color and a bit more uh, drama to the whole thing. It just leads your eye right up into that painting, changing the color a little bit, not keeping it all the same. This was, um, the actual scene was from uh, part of the, uh, on a lane that I used, that I drive by in between mine and special, my old house and special K's house where I'm living now. So we're sort of going over to move stuff. So this is a lane I'm going to go down a lot. I'm going to go walking down here as well. 
So I can imagine I'm going to do lots of uh, paintings from uh, scenes uh, along this lane because it really is very picturesque. But you've got to be a bit careful with the driving because it's quite narrow and uh, if there's a car coming the other way, it would be quite easy to um, lose a wing mirror or something like that. Especially if I'm looking at the scenery while I'm driving. Uh, I've got to be, be a bit more careful about that. So here you can see, look, I'm just putting in a few highlights where the light could sort of uh, bounce off the uh, ground and the sort of texture and raised areas of the soil. And it just softens up those black lines as well. This was really fun to do. I really enjoyed doing this and uh, I was pleased it came together so quick. It's quite abstract, this bit. There's nothing, you know, if you looking at that now, you wouldn't know it was a ploughed field. It's just when it's in the context of looking at the old painting uh, finished that you can see it is in actual fact a ploughed field. I think here I'm going to merge all the layers together. Yeah, I do. And I always um, merge the uh, multiply one down first to the layer below it. And then, no, that's not strictly true. I always make sure that I merge the multiply layer down to a layer that is solid with color. So the base layer really. And that, that way, um, you don't get these sort of quirky things where it doesn't merge quite right. So basically what I'm saying is um, merge your layers in such a way that when you get to do your multiply layer, um, it's the layer below it is solid color. I hope that makes sense. Kind of makes sense to me. So this has got to be uh, really close to the finish painting i may have i'll be having a little break now or something i don't know what's going off oh no here we go I'm back on it again yeah i'm in the right in the foreground just adding some colors there sometimes it's nice to work on a, a smaller image just to uh, tweak things you, you get a better idea of what the old thing looks like look at that uh, complete mess in the foreground it's just sort of colors crashed together but for me you know what i love it i really like this and i love the fact that uh it's abstract and um i'm going to be this one will definitely be going on red bubble because uh link below of course because uh, i really i really like it it's i i think it's spontaneous it's natural and um yeah, a, a nice painting, really. I'm well chuffed with it. I think I may be just sort of taking time now to look at it and decide um, what I need to, you know, where do I need to tweak it? Is everything, so I'm adding a little bit of colour into that um, field at the top of the field, just to sort of reflect the fact that there was uh some corn in there that has been um plowed away i guess you can see that going in yeah and i get a warning there that the battery on my um pencil is getting really low but i wasn't worried because i knew i was really close to finishing this adding some cooler colors in the right hand side there because the sort of light is probably blocked slightly by the uh, the trees I must be getting really close to signing this oh just still putting a few shadows in there that uh, the bells of a the um, so the ploughed field, the distant ploughed field lines are going in there as well. Just sort of final bits of detail. I can't believe I put so much detail in it really. Uh, from memory, I can't remember doing that yesterday. So 
So I'll put a few horizontal posts in there to make that look more like a fence. I'm surely must be going to sign this soon. I'm still tweaking it, still tweaking it, adding a little bit to that uh, tree on the right hand side. Here we go, signatures going in. Probably get undone a few times till I get the right um, thickness of paint or the thickness of the paintbrush. Got that cracked in. There we go. That's it. I didn't even go back in and adjust anything. I signed that. And that's it. That is my painting from memory of uh, some Bales of A. I really, really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, big thumbs up as always is much appreciated. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing because I have lots of videos like this and I would love to be sharing them with you. So hopefully I will see you all in the next one. Bye.